so. This is the suspenseful part. <laughs> I'm just, great. I've just got the sign, welcome everyone who is here present and to those of you who are online to this very special covenanting service with the Center for Christian Studies and Reverend Dr. Alan Lai and Reverend El Elchris Lemonji. Welcome to Westworth United Church. It's an incredible honor for our congregation to host this covenanting service. As we gather together in person and virtually, we light our Christ candle. To remind us of Christ's presence in our midst. And then we take the peace of Christ and light our peace candle, which came indirectly but originally from Russia, as we pray for peace in the Ukraine and in many other countries. Today we think particularly of Palestine and Israel. As we pray for peace in our weary and wounded world, and then we take the love of Christ and light our diversity candle, as we say to all of you here present and to those online, whoever you are, whoever you love, welcome. We acknowledge with gratitude and respect the indigenous peoples of this land and our star blanket that we have hanging in our sanctuary made by Marion McKay, one of our members, is there to always remind us of our responsibilities as treaty people. And so we live, work, and worship on Treaty 1 territory, which are the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, and Dakota nations, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We also receive water from Treaty 3 territory in Shoal Lake. And then we receive hydropower from all five treaty territories in the province of Manitoba. And so we are, on many accounts, all treaty people. Greetings, my name is Michael Shapcott. I'm co-chair of the Central Council of the Center for Christian Studies. Honored to uh, be with you uh, today. I am the Anglican uh, co-chair of, uh, of our council, so I'm grateful, <laughs> Lorraine, to be welcomed into your church. I uh, live much of my life in the mountains of British Columbia in Suwepnakulu, the traditional and unceded uh, unseated is a polite word for saying there were no treaties and the land was stolen uh, from the uh, Swepnik uh, people. Um, and we're grateful that uh, we are able to gather there. So siblings in Christ, we are gathered uh, here today in the presence of God to celebrate a new ministry and to recommit each of ourselves for the service of God. Alan Lay has been appointed to be principal and uh, Alcris Lamonji, the program staff of the Center for Christian Studies. And uh, today, at this time of new beginnings, this is a new beginning for the Center because Alan and Alcris bring particular gifts 
to our ministry at the center together. As we gather in God's presence, let us pray that grace will be given to them, to the staff of the Center for Christian Studies, and all of us in ministry, that we may fulfill the responsibilities which are ours. Let us pray. Creator God, you call us into your church to accept the cost and the joy of discipleship, to celebrate your presence, to live with respect in creation, to be your servants in the service of others, to seek justice and resist evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. Send your Holy Spirit to bind us in full communion so that we may be a hospitable community embodying your love for the world. And as one, let us proclaim, in life, in death, in life beyond death, you are with us. We are not alone. All glory and power be unto you. Amen.
The reading is from the Isaiah chapter 55, 1 to 9. The English text is projected. I will read in Cantonese. 以賽亞書第五十五章一至九節。唉，口渴的人啊，你們都就近水來吧。沒有銀錢的，你們也要來買了就吃。你們要來買酒和奶，不用銀子，也不用付代價。你们为什么用银子去买那些不是植物的呢？为什么用你们劳碌得来的去买那些不能使人饱足的呢？你们要留心听我的话，就可以吃美食，使你哋嘅心灵享受肥甘。你们要侧耳而听，要到我这里来，你们要听就可以存活。我必与你们立永远的约。就是应许赐给大卫那确实的慈爱。看啊，我已经立了他作万族的见证人，为手族的首领和司令。看啊，你们要招聚你不认识的国，那数来不认识你的国也必奔向你，都因耶和华你的神而色列的圣者的缘故，因为他已经荣耀了你。你们要趁着耶和华可以寻找的时候寻找他，趁着他靠近的时候呼求他。恶人要离弃自己的道路，不义的人要除去自己的意念，回转过来归向耶和华，耶和华就必怜悯他。你们当回转过来归向我们的神，因为他大大赦免人的罪。耶和华说：我的意念不是你们的意念。你们的道路也不是我的道路，天怎样那么高，我的道路也怎样高过你的道路，我的意念也怎样高过你们的意念。I'm reading from the Gospels of John, Matthew, and Luke. Este mandamiento nuevo les doy: que se amen los unos a los otros, así como yo los he amado. También ustedes deben amarse los unos a los otros. De este modo todos sabrán que son mis discípulos si se aman los unos a los otros. Ustedes son la luz del mundo. Una ciudad en lo alto, en una colina, no puede esconderse, ni se enciende una lámpara para cubrirla en un ca con un cajón. Por el contrario, se pone en la repisa para que alumbre a todos los que están en la casa. Hagan brillar su luz delante de todos, para que ellos puedan ver las buenas obras de ustedes y alaben al Padre que está en el cielo. Llegó la hora de la cena y el diablo ya había incitado a Judas Iscariote, hijo de Simón, para que traicionara a Jesús. Sabía Jesús que el Padre le había puesto todas las cosas bajo su dominio. Y que había salido de Dios y a él volvía. Así que se levantó de la mesa, se quitó el manto y se ató una toalla en la cintura. Luego echó agua en un recipiente y comenzó a lavarles los pies a sus discípulos y a secárselos con una toalla que llevaba en la cintura. Les he puesto el ejemplo para que hagan lo mismo que yo he hecho con ustedes. Ciertamente les aseguro que ningún siervo es más que su amo. Y ningún mensajero es más que el que lo envió. Entienden esto? Dichosos serán si lo ponen en práctica. El mayor debe comportarse como el menor y el que manda como el que sirve. Porque quién es más importante, el que está a la mesa o el que sirve? No es el que está sentado a la mesa. Sin embargo, yo estoy con ustedes como el que sirve. I sometimes tell folks, this is the part where I get to speak, 
and you get to listen. And if you finish before I do, let me know. Why are we here? Why did you decide to come to this service? I know. You came to covenant, to celebrate, to acknowledge a new step in the life of CCS. But in preparing for this session, it struck me that this is like a baptism. Long before water is poured and words are said, the person being baptized is already a child of God, is already loved by God, and is already loved by their family and community. But we come to the baptismal service to gather and honor and celebrate the gift God has given us. We have visions and hopes for the future of the newly baptized. Alan and Alcris have already signed their contracts, have already begun their work, have already begun forming relationships between themselves and the rest of the staff and the Central Council, the volunteers, the donors, and with the diaconal community and beyond. But in a covenant service, we gather to honor and celebrate the gifts God has given us. We have visions and hope for the future of CCS. And we have one other United Church tradition. Food will be served. <laughs> this is a holy time and a sacred space. Brenda Curtis wrote a song called Common Strands When We Gather. And I think one of the verses helps describe what we're doing. We come from different places. Our lives we've lived apart. But as we merge our visions, it sings within our hearts. Embracing still the promise and reaching for the sky, we yearn for love and wisdom. God, give us wings to fly. Today in this service, promises will be made. All of us will commit ourselves to work together to shape, to grow, to nurture, to carve a future for diaconal ministry in the United and Anglican churches and in any place our students and graduates serve. CCS mission is educating leaders for justice, compassion, and transformation. Note that it does not say our mission is to serve the two founding denominations only. Nor does it say we must graduate diaconal ministers. Our mission is to educate leaders who do the work of diaconal ministry, justice, compassion, and transformation. Diaconal ministry is for all Christians. Duck's statement of vision begins, God calls us to diaconal ministry. The gospel of Jesus invites all to this ministry to offer compassion and accompaniment, to work for liberation and justice, to act as advocates of creative transformation. And in the Iona Report 2016 on the diaconate in the Anglican Church of Canada, it states, through baptism, the ministry of priesthood and of di diaconia is confirmed on all members of the body of Christ, the church. The whole community of the baptized is called to proclaim the good news of God and Jesus Christ, to administer that sacraments and to care for the people of God. The whole community of the baptized is called to preserve faith, order, dis discipline, and unity. And the whole community of the baptized is called to be agents of God's mercy, healing, and justice in the church and in the world. <coughs> Pardon me. CCS recognizes and nurtures all who do diaconal ministry in any form. It is true that Alcris 
and Allen are not diaconal ministers, as many of our past principals and teachers have been, but they do diaconal ministry. The search committee recognized their ministry and their gifts that they bring from their congregational work, educational institutions, administration, national employment, and in the way that they live. Their differences in culture, language, and histories are the gifts that they bring us. Alcree's chosen reading from John tells the very core story of diaconal ministry. Jesus washing the feet of his followers. The towel and the bowl are the very symbol of humility, service, compassion, and risk-taking. They are presented to those who are commissioned to diaconal ministers in the United Church of Canada. Alan's chosen reading begins with compassion for those who are hungry and thirsty. Come and eat. Come and eat and drink. Drink water, milk, wine. It's all free. It's an open bar. Come on down. This covenant is ancient in traditional terms. It is by far not the first, but it is a unique one. The only one of its kind, for it's the only one ever to be made between Allen, Alcris, CCS staff, students, volunteers, donors, guests, families, and denominations. It will change the way we work and worship. It already has. There are very few United Church services that have readings in Cantonese, Spanish, and English. CCS is living its mission by opening itself to be transformed. We are open to new learning, new challenges, and listening in new ways for the vision God has for all of us. God bless us on our journey. Sorry for the noise. It may have something to do with crossed wires. I have not a clue. But it is now my privilege to read greetings from our moderator, our general secretary, and a member of the um, board of the Center for Christian Studies. No, member of the search committee. 
So first from Reverend Michael Blair, our General Secretary from General Counsel. On behalf of the moderator, the Right Reverend Dr. Carmen Lansdowne and myself, I want to offer greetings and congratulations to the Center of Christian for Christian Studies as you celebrate this historic moment in the covenanting with Reverend Dr. Alan Lai and Reverend Elchris Limonji. This gathering is both such an amazing moment as it is reflective of the years of work and practice of living into the United Church's commitment of becoming an intercultural church and a hopeful moment for the future of the church. The contribution of both Alan and Alchris to the center will continue to be at the forefront of imaginative and rooted ministry leadership. I have had the privilege to work with both Alchris and Alan and I'm grateful for their commitment, daring and passion. They will inspire with gentle, gentleness, boldness and sometimes parabolic drama. You will laugh and cry and enjoy good food. They will serve you well. To you, Alan and Elchris, thanks for your openness to the Spirit and your willingness to offer your gifts. May you be blessed. And as you engage your ministry, may you continue to practice hope by planting seeds, encouraging prophetic imagination, and embodying justice. Every blessing. Then the letter from the right reverend, Dr. Carmen Lansdowne. Dear Ellen and Elchris, I'm writing to congratulate you on your installation as principal and as program staff at, at the Center for Christian Studies. Last week, Ellen, you and I had the joint pleasure of attending the installation of Reverend Dr. Heron Kim Craig as principal at Emmanuel College. She is the first woman of color to be principal there, and you are the first Asian principal of CCS. This signals to me a hopeful shift in leadership in the United Church of Canada, where we are truly living into our commitment to becoming an intercultural church. Having also been someone who studied under you during your teaching years at the Vancouver School of Theology nearly 20 years ago, I can attest to your search committee's comment, com comment about your infectious energy and your passion for theological education. I cannot think of a better gift to the United Church of Canada than you leading ministry personnel and other leaders in the church as they prepare for Ministry of Education, Service, and Pastoral Care. Alchris, your work within our denomination on anti-racism and your passion for teaching and social justice will make you an excellent addition to this important center of theological formation. As your friend and colleague, I wish you both God's every blessing in these leadership roles May you feel the groundedness of tradition, the winds of change and opportunity, the warmth of the sun shining on you in regular repetition, and the cool waters of rest and rejuvenation when you need them. I have recently reconnected with a prayer that will guide my work as moderator for the coming triennium, and I share it with you now in celebration of the seeds you will plant in this new ministry. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that 
one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything. And there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future not our own. It's a footnote I might read. Although this prayer that I just read is attributed to Oscar Romero, this prayer actually was first presented by Cardinal Dearden in 1979 and quoted by Pope Francis in 2015. This reflection is an excerpt from a homily written for Cardinal Dearden by then Father Ken Untener on the occasion of the Mass for deceased priests on October 25th, 1979. It continues, but that's all we need to know for tonight. Carmen ends her letter by saying, may it be so to this prayer with love and gratitude. And lastly, a letter from Reverend Mona Denton, chair of the search committee. The world and the church is living through a time of great transition. The Center for Christian Studies is no different. When we learned that the center would be searching for two new leaders to join the staff team, it felt like a window of opportunity for us to imagine church differently through our search and hiring. Equity and diversity was very much on our mind, and so we engaged the gifts of an equity coach. Our eyes were opened in many ways as we strove to be as open and inclusive as possible in our searching, trusting the Spirit to guide us. Alan and Alcris quickly spoke to us of the vision we had seen emerging. Alan's passion for imaginative administration and outreach, combined with his diverse gifts in social media, photography, music, intercultural ministry, progressive theology, and energy are gifts we hold up today. Alcris brings such a depth of pastoral ministry, experiential learning, compassionate discipleship, a dedication to reconciliation and indigenous partnerships, and progressive ways of engaging the diversity of the world through the lens of faith. Her keen intellect and ability to connect with vibrant faith expression give us great confidence that she will open our eyes to new ways of being the church. Together we celebrate the variety of gifts Alcris and Alan bring to our gifted staff team. We warmly welcome them into our CCS family circle and can't wait to see what possibilities the new team will bring to us all. We are blessed indeed. Blessings, Mona. We are here to join in a covenantal relationship with God and between the Reverend Alan, Dr. Alan Lai and the Reverend Alcris Lamongi. Through this act of covenanting, we seek ways to faithfully deepen our commitment to serve God and live into our call to embody God's love in the world. As the Center for Christian Studies community, we are all part of supporting and embodying its noble, challenging and inspiring mission. As students, volunteers, graduates, friends, 
staff, members of council, we offer our gifts in a variety of tasks and relationships that shape the center and its mandate. And so I ask all of you, both here in this hall and those that are online, do you commit yourselves to this community of learning and its work of preparing for ministries of justice and education? We, we will, will, with, with the, the guidance, guidance of God's help. help. And uh, I'd like to um, first start with Alan Melchris. As co-chair of the Central Council of the Center for Christian Studies, I acknowledge and support that Alan has been appointed to the position of principal in Alcris on program staff for the Center for Christian Studies. And so I ask you, Alan and Alcris, will you commit your gifts and energy to this community? Will you learn and lead, sharing in both the joy and the responsibility? Will you be accountable for the privilege with which this community entrusts you? I will, God being my helper. And I'd like to ask staff to uh, come forward. We have uh, Scott, Lori, Cheryl, and I believe Marcy is joining us in that great ether, which is the internet somewhere. These are among the staff of the, uh, of the center. So Scott, Lori, Cheryl, Marcy, <laughs> wherever you are, will you commit yourselves to mutual accountability, working in a spirit of trust and respect? Will you be a compassionate presence for the students and the wider CCS community of friends, encouraging them as they grow and learn, respecting them as individuals with needs, gifts, and dreams? We will, God being our helper. And Stacy, who I think, here we are. Will you join us, please? To you as a representative of the Central Council, as a Central Council member, Stacy, will you commit yourself to offering welcome support and encouragement to Alan and Alcris in their new roles. We will, God being our helper. And to our entire assembled congregants and those uh, online, as members of the CCS community and the larger community, do you commit yourself to offer support for the staff and the ongoing life of CCS, its mission and ministry? We will. God being our helper. And now I'll invite Lori to begin the presentation of symbols. The Greek word diakonia is often used in the New Testament for serving at table. Jesus cared about the nurturing and feeding of people in body and spirit. He understood the meaning of community gathered at table. To do diakonia is to follow the example of this table server. God calls us all into ministry. We gather around this table. May there be welcome and hospitality. May this day nurture and feed us in body and spirit. From the fourth century, reading the gospel was seen as a diaconal task. Sometimes the deacon also preached, and almost always the reading of the gospel was associated with the diaconal role of teacher. Part of the diaconal task is not just to tell the Jesus stories, but to help people tell their own stories of their pain and suffering of their joys and triumphs, of deaths and resurrections, of God at work among them. We give thanks for the personal stories lived with commitment and courage, with faith and vision, with passion and compassion, with joy and blessing. When the early church was under persecution, 
the deaconesses and deacons stood at the door when the community gathered. They stood, as it were, at the boundaries between church and world. They were positioned at the edges, some would say the cutting edge. You may call such diac diaconia today ministries of outreach and hospitality and interpretation and mediation and reconciliation, bringing distant parties together, arranging welcome spaces, making the word come alive in languages that people can understand. For all those involved in teaching and learning at the Centre for Christian Studies, we yeah, offer our yeah, prayers, O oh God. For the students, staff, and friends of the Centre for Christian Studies, for all, all people, people engaged in, in theological, theological education, education and formation for, for ministry, ministry, we offer our thanks for their gifts and commitment. We offer our prayers for their openness and wisdom. Part of the vision that we in the diaconate see is that this ministry belongs to all the people of God, not just us. Sometimes we do diaconate in the name of the people of God. Sometimes we teach, equip, liberate others for this ministry in the world. Always we are a sign, a living reminder that God calls us all, the people of God, into diaconia. May all these signs of the ministry which is upheld by the Center for Christian Studies and shared by all the people of God, may, may we find joy, joy together, together in the service of Christ. Ellen was born and raised in Hong Kong and El Cris in Venezuela. El Cris came from Ottawa and Ellen from Vancouver. They bring their cultures angle of perspectives and intercultural experiences to the Center for Christian Studies. Together with other staff, Central Council members and students, they join the good team of people to transform the Center to become a vibrant, relevant and liberating school of theological learning. While seeking to honor the hard work of past saints and diaconal traditions, they're committed to expand and to enrich the Center's Ministry of Empowerment, Reconciliation, and Mutual Understanding. All have been called and named by God's love. All are welcome in this place. Let us work together in harmony. Your wind, and without you, we can do nothing. We, we give, give you thanks, thanks for this opportunity, opportunity to work with the people of the Center for Christian, Christian Studies. We are diverse, but united by your grace of hope and love. Strengthen us by your presence, that our thoughts and actions may be rooted and grounded in your love for us and for the world. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I present the principal and staff of the Center for Christian Studies and invite your welcome. Let us rejoice in the covenant that we have made. Please express your joy in all the ways. And after expressing our joy, may we share uh, with the sign of peace and, of course, recognizing in these uh, troubled times that uh, we don't necessarily embrace each other with a kiss of peace, but uh, express peace in more uh, uh, public health aware ways. <laughs> peace. Peace be with you. Let us pray together. Uh, I will conclude each petition with uh, the call, creating God, receive our prayers, and invite you to respond, hear us, O God. 
for the mission of the Center of the of for, for the mission of the Center for Christian Studies and the United Church of Canada, the Anglican Church of Canada, and our ministry partners around the world who work to, toward our common vision of a hospitable and uniting church, creating God, receive our prayers. For faithful disciples in our communities of faith who work towards our common purpose of extravagant welcome, proclaiming the gospel and mending God's world, creating God, receive our prayers. For the dreamers, teachers, and prophets who share our common longing to be one in Christ with creation and with each other, creating God, receive our prayers. For those around the world who work towards our sacred message of justice and peace in harmony, creating God, receive our prayers. For the prayers we name to you now in the silence of our hearts. Creating God, receive our prayers. Gracious Creator, hear the prayers of your people for the sake of our world. With our prayers, accept the dedication of our lives that we may minister to the world in the name of Jesus, through whom we pray. Amen. Let us recite the Lord's Prayer in whatever language you prefer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. May I draw to your attention that there is um, at the back uh, an offering basket. Uh, please feel free to uh, share, and we are grateful for any gifts that uh, are offered to support the work and ministry of the Center for Christian Studies. Thank you. And now our blessing. May we be filled with the grace and peace of the Creator who is and was and is to come and with the Spirit of Jesus Christ, God's faithful witness who loves us and sets us free. Amen. From ancient times, it's been uh, the task of the deacon to send the uh, faithful into the world and uh, to dismiss. And so I.
take that responsibility uh, on today. Uh, and I say, go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And there is, now this is because it's organized by United Church, I gather there's no alcohol, no <laughs> sherry. If this, if this had been an Anglican church, just saying, we would have had sherry, but uh, sadly, uh, we will have other bountiful goods. <laughs> Thanks be to God for them. Thank <laughs> you.